Hey folks, I'm Pat Schloss and this is Code Club. June 19th, 1865 marked the date that slaves in Texas were finally liberated in the United States and has become the day annually that is recognized as the Emancipation Date and is celebrated as a holiday and has been celebrated for some time among the black community. And recently, in the last several days, uh, President Biden signed into law an act declaring this to be a national holiday. To commemorate this holiday over the past several episodes, I've been developing data visualizations using data drawn from the CSDE lynching database. This database has done its best to catalog lynchings of mainly black men and women um, between the years 1877 and 1950. Two episodes ago, I built a line plot showing the total number of lynchings of black individuals between 1877 and 1950, as well as a heat map that indicated uh, the number of lynchings that occurred um, by state and by year. In the last episode, um, I then went on and took that heat map idea and applied it to a map of the southern United States, the states where lynching was in practice, uh, and to show the number of lynchings by county. As we've gone along, um, I've commented that one of the th refrains that we hear from the Black Lives Matter movement and from the protests last summer is the concept of say the name, right? Say the name of the victim. Don't just let them be forgotten to history. And so in some ways, the visuals that I've already been showing, uh, we didn't say the name, obviously, right? We were looking at aggregated statistics. We're looking at counts. We're looking at, you know, a total, something like that. And in a way, it kind of dehumanizes uh, the victims. And, and of course, we can't always show data at the individual level. But as I was thinking about this concept and, and kind of reading literature and how people think about racial violence, uh, again, this idea of say the name came back to me. And what I would like to do in this episode is I'm going to create a movie, a data movie, where each frame of the movie uh, is that map of the southern United States with each county lit up as the name of the victim is pronounced, so to speak, uh, in the movie. And so that is the task for today. Um, as you've perhaps seen over the last several episodes, there really isn't anything new that I'm presenting if you've watched you know, the past hundred some episodes of Code Club. Uh, to make this all happen, we're going to use the great GG Animate package, and we'll also do a fair amount of data cleanup so that we can have a nice attractive label, um, and that we will finally produce this video <laughs> to show how to make the video. And then I will also um, produce a video that I will also post in parallel to this. So I encourage you to watch this, but I certainly also encourage you to watch the video where I show the name, the county where that person was killed, as well as as much information as we have about that individual. Sadly, uh, many of the people in the database, we don't know their name. We perhaps know their, their sex, maybe their age, uh, and we do know how they were killed. Let's go ahead over to our studio and we'll get going with today's episode. So I've gone ahead and taken the code from my Juneteenth map.r script and put it into a new script, which is Juneteenth map movie.r. Um, let me go ahead and source this so we can see the map. I've already shown you in the intro of what it looks like, but let's double check that the code actually works. Great, we get the figure that we ended the last episode with. A couple things that I see in this that I'd like to go ahead and clean up. So for the movie, I'm gonna get rid of the title as well as uh, the legend. Also, I'm gonna put this up onto YouTube that has an aspect ratio of 16 wide, nine high. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change the proportions of the figure. And I can then uh, come down to my code where I built out that figure. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the title and I'll remove this uh, legend position coordinates. And in here I'll put none, which means don't show a legend. And then I also don't need to worry about legend direction. Um, I'm gonna do uh, lynchings map. Uh, dot tiff, that's fine. Uh, my height, I'm gonna make 4.5, and my width, um, I'm gonna make eight, right? So that'll give me my 16 by nine dimensions. Let's go ahead and double check this all works. We have our map in that 16 by nine aspect ratio, looks good. And now what I'd like to do is go back into the code and remove the aggregation so that our data frame that we're mapping, that we're plotting, um, is at the individual level rather than the aggregate level. I'm gonna go ahead back up to my, the top of my script here, and I'll go ahead and uh, comment out the assignment. And let's look at the code to see where we're aggregating things and make sure that like the information we're interested in is actually coming through the pipeline. 
So again, we read it in, we turn all of the column names to be lowercase so they're easier to work with. We then filter the data, only work with the black victims. There are some white and Hispanic victims in here. Again, because this is commemoration of Juneteenth, I really wanna focus on the black victims. This line 12, where we do the count on state and county is where we aggregated the number of victims again by state and county. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Uh, we then join together because we had two letter abbreviations for the states to a, a full name for the state. So that makes it easier to merge our, our, our database data for the lynchings to information from the map. Um, we do that all here. And then we get to a select function where we're looking at the state, county, and N. Well, we no longer have an N. Um, and also I want information about the victim, right? So let's go ahead and look at these lines and we can see the types of data that we have uh, from the database. We have the information about the date, the name of the victim, their race, which we already use for filtering. We also have the victim's sex, the victim's age. Um, we've already used the county and state information. There's information here about the mob. Um, the accusation, I'm not so interested in that. I am interested in the method of death uh, to report that out. And there's also lynch date. So I think we've got some good information here that we can um, modify our select statement with. And so I'll use name, victims, sex, victims, age, method of death, and lynch date. Again, we have the state, county, name, sex, age, method of death, and the lynch date. Looking at this data, I can already see that we're gonna to have to do some cleaning up of the data so that it, it works well. What I'd like to do, again, is each frame of the movie be that map, light up the county that the victim came from in red, and then have a little caption to say something about the victim. As you can see, we don't know a whole lot about the victim. So I wanna put as much of this information in there as we can, but we start seeing things like, you know, we don't know everyone's age. Um, I suspect we don't know everyone's method of death, you know, so here we have unreported as a method of death. Well, we could say they were lynched, right? We could say that at least. Also looking at the date uh, is an eight digit number um, rather than a, a date formatted um, column. And so we'll have to clean that up a little bit as well. But before we do all that, what I'd like to do is think about how we can then integrate this information into the figure. So I'll go ahead and reassign this back to a variable that I will call lynchings. And then wherever I had lynchings uh, per state county, I need to replace that with lynchings. All right, to make sure I've got all my good stuff here. And I think that did it. And again, now I can run all these code chunks and I can look at lynchings uh, map data and see I've got the state, county, the name, the, their sex, their age, method of death, the date, and then the long lat group and order um, for making the map. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Uh, what I don't have though is that end column for indicating uh, the, the number of victims per state and county, right? So what I'm going to do for this uh, lynchings map data, I'll go ahead and pull lynchings out from here and then pipe that into this right join. And then I'll go ahead and add a mutate and do n equals one. Uh, and that will kind of be a pseudo count, right? So each lynching was a, a, single, a single murder, right? And so we then have lynchings map data, that looks good. Um, and then we can maybe clean up our code a little bit here. All right, and then let's go ahead and build the plot. Uh, we're getting an error, um, probably coming back up here from where I did my mutate. Again, we did this right join so that we have all the counties, even those where there wasn't a, a lynching. And those are represented as an NA. And because before N was an integer, because it was produced from the count function, um, when NA, when N was NA, so if that's true, then we needed to plug in zero as an integer. And so that's why we use the L. And so now N is a double. And so we're, we're good with using zero as a double. Now we have our map. Again, every county where there was a lynching is lit in red. Good. The next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and build the animation. But before I build that animation, I don't wanna build an animation with all 3,200 victims because that's gonna take a long time to render. And as I'm testing things out, I'm not gonna look at all 3,200 frames. Maybe I'll only look at, at 10 random victims. And up here again, where I make that lynchings map data, I can do slice sample n equals 10. And if I look at that, I then get 10 random uh, individuals from um, the data set. And I can then, um, pipe that into the rest of my join. 
And that reminds me, because I'm going to do this random uh, sampling, I need to go ahead and set the seed. And so I will use 1865-0619 as my seed. Uh, and that way, every time I rerun this, I'll get the same order of victim. I get my map with 10 counties lit up. Um, yep, there are 10 counties there I can quickly count. And so this will be good for, again, testing our animation and testing everything else, else that we're working on. To build the animation, the first thing that I want to do is call this static version of the animation static. And so that will create, again, the static data frame. With that static uh, variable holding the plot, we can then add on the animation information from GG Animate. And so we can do static plus uh, transition manual. And then we're going to index the plot or the movie over uh, a variable. And for now, we're going to use name. Eventually, we'll come back and make a, a more attractive uh, caption. And so I will then call this animation. And then we can do animate as a function on animation. And I'm going to give it uh, this height and width, which again uh, comes from the aspect ratio for YouTube. And we will then do units equals inches, res equals 300. Um, I will do FPS, so frames per second. I'll do one frame per second, so each victim will get one second. If that's too slow for some people or too fast for some people, in YouTube they can they can modulate how fast the video goes. And then we need to end frames. Uh, for the number of frames. And so I'll do then 10 frames. Uh, we'll then have to modify that later on. And then we need a render. And then we'll do magic uh, render. And so that will produce a GIF. Uh, and again, later we'll change the render to produce an MP4. Again, I just I just want to start, start simple and we'll build up. And then we can do anim save. And we can then save this as Juneteenth map movie.gif and anim save will save the last uh, plot that was generated as a gif before i generate the animation i need to be sure to do library gg animate and then we can go ahead and run these lines to build out our animation that took a couple seconds to to render and we now have uh, our gif here in safari as i'm looking at it where we see each county being lit up in red. And so this is the startings of, of, a, of a really nice uh, movie, I think. So I see in my output in the console that I am getting some warning messages. I'm not totally gonna worry about those just yet. We'll come back and clean those up later. So I'd like to go ahead and start thinking about how we're gonna build the caption. To do that, we're gonna use a geome called geome text box, which comes to us from ggtext. And so here I'm going to give it a different data frame that will be caption data. And I will then use an AES for the label to be, um, uh, you know, for now it's going to be uh, the caption. And so that, that text box will have the caption in it. So we have to build up caption data as well as the caption. And then our X, um, we need to figure out where that is on the coordinate system as well as the Y position. And uh, I'm sure we'll have to do other styling as well. So I'll go ahead and put a comment before that, um, just to kind of give us a sense of where we're going and what we need to develop. So again, we need to develop this caption data data frame. So I'll put that up here. And again, our lynchings map data, the state, the county, the name, the victims, and so forth. Um, ultimately, I think we're going to have a column that takes a lot of this information about the name, sex, age, method of death, and date folds that together as a caption. So for now, what I'll do is I will take lynchings uh, map data, and then I will do uh, select on name, and I'm going to rename um, caption, or name to be caption, right? Uh, and then I can assign this back to caption data. And so that, if we look at caption data, uh, so I'll go ahead and do distinct on caption, so now if I look at caption data, I then get um, those um, 10 or 11 <laughs> names. So this 11th, I think, is coming through because lynchings map data has NA values for the victims. And so that's, that's a problem, right? So let's go ahead and in here, I'm going to do um, a drop NA, um, maybe after my distinct. So I will do drop NA on caption. 
And now if I look at caption data, I see I've got those 10 names. While I'm at it, I think what I'll do up here, instead of worrying about this, um, this mutate line that I modified earlier, is I'll do a drop NA on um, the N column. Again, that came through because we did a right join to get all the county information, even for counties where there wasn't a, a, a recorded victim. So what I'm going to do down here in static is for the time being, I'm going to turn off theme void so I can see the X and Y axis labels. And let's go ahead and look at static. So I can now see the latitude and longitude for my map, and I can use those values to position uh, where I want to put that caption. So I have a couple different options for where to put the caption. When I was initially thinking about this, I was thinking about putting it in the Gulf of Mexico, right? Um, because there's a lot of white space there that we could put in a caption. But then that means that you're looking at the bottom to find the name when there's all this action happening up in the map. I think what I'd rather do is perhaps put it up here, kind of where you'd expect to see like Missouri and Illinois and uh, Indiana and Ohio, uh, so that the name is at the top and then you can see where they were from. Because I think the name is what's really important here. So I think we'll do that. So we'll go ahead and pick coordinates that are up here in the upper left quadrant of our map. So maybe what we'll do is like minus 95 and maybe 45 um, as our coordinates. So we'll do minus 95 and Y will be 45. And we'll go ahead and bring that back on and let's see what this looks like. Uh, so we're getting an error that object group not found. And that's because my geom text box, I, I need to say inherit AES equals false. Um, that's because the AES up here for the main plot has group, but I don't have group down here below. I'm going to go ahead and put the arguments for geom text box on separate lines because I think we're going to do some more fiddling with the parameters here and it'd be easier than having them kind of running off the screen. Uh, so I'm not seeing it. I did pick 45, which is perhaps a little bit beyond the range um, of the y axis. So let's go ahead and do 40 uh, in our geom text box. And so we can see uh, part of a text box there. And I'm wondering if I have a problem with my justification. So what I'll do in here is I'll do H just. So that's the horizontal justification. If I pick zero, that should be left justified and V just, which is the vertical justification. So if I pick one, that should be at the top. So that then puts the name Will Hood right there at 40. Why don't I try to go ahead and move it up a little bit? Maybe I'll do 41 and Let's move it over to the left a little bit. Let's do 95.5. So that placement looks pretty good. What I'd like to do is get rid of the bubble around the name. Uh, to do that, back up here in Geom text box, I'll go ahead and do fill equals NA, and then box.color equals NA, and that should get rid of uh, the, the surrounding uh, border. So I see my county is still moving around with the GIF, but my names aren't, and it occurs to me that when I did this transition manual, I did it on name, whereas the column in caption data is caption, not name. So let me go ahead and fix that uh, and put that back to name. And then I think down here in my geom text box, I also use the label caption. All right, so let's go ahead and rerun all this and I think it should work. This is working, right? We've got the name, we've got the county, each um, iteration, each step in the GIF is a different victim being represented in the map, which is exactly what we wanted. One thing I'm noticing is that I lost my county borders. So before I go further, I'm going to come back and solve that problem. And the problem was that I did drop an A on N, um, and that got rid of all my warning messages, you'll notice. Um, but that also got rid of all those counties that weren't represented um, in the data, right? Uh, that, that didn't have a victim. So I need to go ahead and add that back. And what I'm going to do is I have a uh, county map and state map. And I think what I'll do is I will add a geom. So I've got this geom polygon for the victim, right? Uh, and that's getting filled in for each victim. And I'll, I'll add another geom polygon that will be much like this state map one, but will be county map. And um, I think what I'll do is this will be then size equals 0 0.1 for that state boundary. I think this should work. So I see my uh, county boundaries there now on the static version. Great. And now I have my county lines um, for all the other counties. I don't know. Maybe you might think that all those county lines are a bit busy. I kind of think it helps provide structure within each of the state uh, and make it more clear what's actually being lit up um, rather than these kind of 
odd shaped polygons in the middle of the state. So I kind of like leaving it in there. What I want to turn my attention to next is building a better caption that we can put on each slide of the video. Um, what I'd like to include is the name of the victim, uh, their sex, their age, and how they were killed, as well as the date they were killed. I could imagine having their name. Uh, let me go ahead and write this down up here under lynchings. Um, so I want to have like name in bold. Um, and then I want to have um, their sex and age, uh, method of death, and then the date, right? And so each caption will be like three lines. To build out this caption, I need to make sure that the values for these different variables um, look right. And so I'll start with sex. And the process that I'm gonna follow is very similar to what we did in the last episode when I tried to make, the, make sure the county names in the database match those um, in the files for building the map. And so what I'll do here is I'll do count on sex. And I'll also come back up here and so I don't have to type lynchings over and over again. I'll, I'll put that on a separate line so that as I run this pipeline, it outputs to the screen what's going on. Uh, and that should be victim sex. And so I see I have female, male, and unknown. So right, that unknown should probably be an A. So I'll go ahead in here and do a mutate on uh, victim sex equals if else um, victim sex equals equals unknown, then I want that to be an NA and it's gonna be NA character. Otherwise, I want it to be victim sex. Okay, and then we can pipe that into victim sex. And so now we see we got rid of that unknown that that became an NA. I think something else that I would like to do is go ahead and make that lowercase. So we'll do victim sex equals to lower victim sex. Right, and so now we've got our sexes um, all in lowercase. So good, so we've cleaned up the sex, right? So I'll go ahead and do a count now on victim's age. Um, there's a lot in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and pipe this to view, and we'll get that to uh, pop up here in a nice table. And so I'm seeing things like less than space 20, less than 20, 10, 12 months, right? Um, and I've got a range of, of date ages, right? Um, these are the numbers. Um, I see about 25, aged, boy, child, elderly, right? Um, I've got some funny numbers. I've got NA, right, where we don't know. Old, old man. So I'd like to go ahead and clean these up. Again, my process cleaning up the ages is going to be very much like what we did with the sex and what we did with the county. So, for example, I could do mutate victim's age. Um, and then I will do um, str replace. And so I'm gonna be looking for patterns and then modifying those, right? So victim's age. So perhaps the first modification I'll make is for those ages that had a less than sign. Notice some had a space after the less than and some didn't. So I can do a space question mark to match zero or one spaces. And then I can replace that with less than something. And perhaps then I need to put in here a match to the the, the, the number, the, the, the age, right, in parentheses. And so then I can do less than back back one years old. Go ahead and throw that into our pipeline. So now we no longer have that less than. Um, and if we come down here, we should see less than 20 years old, right? And so that then got those three individuals. So I'll go ahead and do one more example with you before I kind of <laughs> do some fast forwarding. And we'll do victim's age. I'm going to do another string of place on victim's age. And let's look at those ages where there was a range, right? And so there we could do um, in our capture parentheses, back, back, D star, hyphen, back, back, D star, and then close out our capture. And then we could do back, back, one uh, years old. And so now we see that where we had the range of ages, we have 14 to 15 years old, 14 to 20 years old. So that looks good. All right. So I'm going to keep going through this. I don't want to bore you with all the kind of uh, the typos <laughs> and all the, the working out the regular expressions. So I'll be right back. So I went through and I came up with maybe a dozen or so uh, different string replace functions uh, to clean up those ages a bit. Um, and um, I, I think it's all fairly straightforward, nothing too controversial, I hope. Um, there was some 
and there was like an aged category or old man or old. So I just kind of gave them some respect and said elderly, right? Um, there was a young category. And so like boy, child, youth, I also made those young. Um, for someone in their late 30s, I said they were 35 to 39 years old to again, kind of give everything a more common format. There were some weird characters in some of the, the ages. And so I, I cleaned that up. Um, uh, one other thing I did was that if it said unknown for the victim's age, I made that an NA. And so what this looks like then is that we come down to 113 different um, ages, so to speak. And you can kind of see what they look like here. And I, I think um, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this all turned out. The next thing that I want to turn my attention to is the method of death. And we now look at that. And again, we see some funny characters in those names. Um, we see semicolons. I think, you know, burned, riddled with bullets. I'd rather be burned, comma, riddled with bullets. Um, you know, some of these cases, there's a hyphen. I'd rather that to be a comma. Again, what I'm going for is to try to give everything a common appearance. You know, here it says hang. I'd like that to be hanged, right? Um, hanged and shot, strangulation. You know, let's, let's maybe put a comma in there. Um, and, and, and make that just look a little bit nicer um, and more uniform across all the, the different victims. So the approach to cleaning this up is very similar to what we did with victim sex and victim's age. So we'll do a mutate method of death equals str replace. And again, um, I'll do method of death. And then the pattern, you know, let's match a semicolon space and I'm gonna replace that with a comma space, right? And then I can pipe that into my count. And then I see that I no longer have um, semicolons in here. So this like burned, riddled with bullets. Um, I'll, I'll perhaps want to fix that capitalization as well, but I no longer have that semicolon. Again, just trying to get something uniform. I can do something similar uh, with those hyphens, right? So if I have um, space hyphen, I can make that comma space. Um, and if there's uh, no space around the hyphen, I can make that comma space. Again, I can keep churning through those. I'm not gonna bore you, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward and I'll show you what I come up with in the end. Again, I went through and made a series of string replace function calls, um, as well as a case when statement. Um, there were a variety of things that were um, NA, not reported, unknown, unreported, um, unreproted. And so all those I made lynched. Again, this like kind of generic category and cleaned up some of these other things as well. And when you look at kind of the categories that we got out in the end, um, I think they look pretty nice. One thing that I did um, in here was method of death, str to sentence. What that did was if I had two capitalized letters in the same sentence, um, that makes it sentence format. You could also make it title format so that the first character of each word is capitalized. String to sentence makes the first character of the string capitalized. Next, what I wanna do is let's look at the name. So looking at the names, um, most of these look pretty good. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, there's like 3,000 of these, so this will take a while. Um, there's a couple of things that stood out to me when I was looking at this. And one of those is that there's some of these funny characters, right? So like Bill with this odd character. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up again, much like we did before. Mutate name equals um, str replace. And then we'll do that on name. And the pattern is going to be that funny character. And then um, uh, replacing it with nothing. So I'll go ahead and copy and highlight that question mark. Plop that into here. Pipe that over. And let's see if we can find... Well, now we have... <laughs> the, we've got a reorganized... Um, uh, list here. And I think these are the last names. So before perhaps it was a question mark, a stylized question mark for the first name and then the last name. Um, and what I'm also noticing is that these are the last names in alphabetical order and that there's a space actually before like woods, before getting to bear. And so I think there was a space um, around that odd character. And so let's go back and go ahead and... Um, do another one of these replacements and we'll do name. Uh, and then instead of that character, we'll look for things that start, words that start with a space. 
Good. So we no longer see those space last names. Um, we've got names that start with quotes, nicknames, no doubt, and then um, alphabetized by first name. So I'll go back through the list and see if there's anything else that catches my eye, and I'll go ahead and fix those and come back and show you what I found. So there wasn't too much more that I had to go through and polish up. Um, you'll see that I have two things that I've added, um, unnamed and then following string or unknown and following string. Um, this should actually be period star, right? Um, and so in those cases, um, they, they would have been like unnamed Negro and perhaps unnamed Negro one of three or something like that. Um, and so I figured I'd just name them as unnamed, right? And that way um, that this, this, um, this name or tag that was given to the victim was given by the, the you know, either the newspaper or uh, by the researchers. And so I don't feel like I'm stripping them of their identity by saying that they're unnamed because that's that's already clear, right? Um, so I think that looks good. I'll go ahead and remove that count and view and do another mutate uh, to make the caption. And I'm gonna use the glue function to pull this off. And so I need to make sure I load my library glue. And then for my caption, again, I kind of have the layout that I have down here in this comment. So I'll do glue. And then in double stars, I'll put the name. And uh, that name needs to be in curly braces to insert that into the glue. And then I'll do a comma. And then I will do um, victims sex space victims age. Again, that, those, both of those need to be in the curly braces. And then I'll do a line break um, to put a method of death and uh, the lynch date. And so I'll put that on another line, right? So BR uh, lynch date. And again, that needs to be in curly braces. Now, one of the things I know is that we have NA values for victim sex and for victim's age. And so I'm gonna make some contingencies for cases where victim sex or victim's age are NAs. So that's likely gonna change. So I'm gonna make another variable that I will call um, last lines and that will be all this stuff, right? Uh, the, the method of death and the lynch date. And so that needs to be in glue, in parentheses, as well as in quotes. All right. And so then I can insert in here um, the last lines, right? So this is like what we're gonna have as a caption when we have all the data. I'm going to replace that though with a case when. So if the victim sex is NA, so is.NA victim sex, um, then I'm going to take this and what am I going to use? So I'm going to say, I'm going to remove victim sex, right? I'll put in the victim's age as well as the last lines. Um, that's good. And then is.NA victim's age. And then we'll do very much the same thing, um, but instead of um, victim's age, we'll do victim sex, last lines. And then, because every case when should end with a true, um, and that'll be a case where we have everything, we have all the data, uh, we'll then put in, again, what we thought of as like kind of the ideal situation. And so that closes that, uh, the case when for uh, that parentheses, and I think we are good there. Uh, looking at this, um, our caption falls off the end. So why don't I go ahead and for testing, do a select and I'll do state, county and caption. And again, I see I've got the state, county, the caption, the, the person's name with the two stars. And again, when I put that into Geom text box, that will rep that'll recognize that as markdown and make that bold. And then I have mail, hanged, ah, and then I have my date and my date is not properly formatted. So let's go back and fix that. Why don't I, instead of getting Lynch date, why don't we get the day, month, year? Uh, because that was already in um, in in the data frame, in, in the database. So where did we get that? So back here, that was Lynch date. Let's do day, month, year. And I just wanna make sure that it's all there. So we've got day, month, year. One thing I worry about, again, with all this data, is whether or not we have sensical values. So I'm gonna come back down here before I made the caption and I'll go ahead and do a count on day. 
uh, and I've got a zero for a day, right? So that's not that's not sensical. Um, let's actually let's look at all the values, and so we can do view, right? And so we see we have zero through thirty-one, and we have one hundred twenty-nine. So that's not right. All right, so we'll do a mutate on day and do an if else. And so if the day uh, is less than one or day greater than 31, then we're gonna use na underscore uh, uh, real. Otherwise, we'll use day. Um, perhaps we might worry about months like February that only have 28 days showing up with 30 days or something like that, but I think we'll be okay. Um, so let's look at, make sure that works. And so again, we have one to 31 days and we have that NA. So we're in good shape. Let's now count months. And we have zero and 23. What's going on? All right. Um, and so here again, we can add another mutate line. And so we'll do month. Uh, so if else day, if month. greater than 12, then we want to give an NA, otherwise we're going to use the month. So let's look at that. Great. So again, uh, that all looks good. And uh, then our years, I think, are in pretty good shape, although we could uh, double check for sure. We could do a count year. And again, 1877 to 1950, we're in good shape. Okay. So we have clean <laughs> days and months. Um, and we could probably also do uh, day equals if else um, is dot na on month, then we want to make um, day to be an na real. Otherwise, we'll use day, right? Okay. So that is good. Now what we want to do is format our date to be text base. And to do that, what I'll do will be date, and I will then use I, I want this to be month, day, year. Um, in the United States, these are American data, so we're going to use American notation. So I'll build this with glue. So to give us something to work with, I'll go ahead and do month, day, comma, uh, year. Um, and I think that will look good. Um, and let's go ahead and do a select on a month, day, year and date. And we see we have November 2nd, 1877, 11 to 1877. Good. Now what we can do is if I have, um, I can use the month function um, on 11 and that doesn't work because I haven't loaded Liberdate. So up here I need to do library Liberdate. Right. And so now if I do month 11, uh, I get 11, right? Uh, if I do month 11 and I do label equals true, then I get nov. And if I do ABB equals false, so abbreviation equals false, I'll get November, okay? And then this is telling us that the month is a ordered factor, right? Because months fall in an order. Okay, so again, coming down uh, to where I was working with the dates, again, for month, I'm gonna use the month function around that. We'll do ABB equals false, label equals true, and then close parentheses. That looks good. Um, now, of course, we do have in our data cases where the month or the day is unknown. So I'm going to go ahead and do another case when. So case when. So case when is dot an A on month. I'm going to uh, then borrow this. And let me put this to another line so we get some more real estate. See, and so if if the month is unknown, then I'm only going to show the year, and then if the day is unknown, so if the month was unknown, then it'll kick out of the case when. Um, if the day is unknown, right, then we need to glue um, and borrow this what we had down here, right, uh, where we'll do month and then year. And I think I need an open quote here. And then if true, then I'm going to show my idealized um, date. And then we'll clean this up. 
and then we'll pipe this into everything else. Uh, and I think I'm missing a parenthesis, so I'll add that. And then I've got my dates and those all look good. Okay, so coming back to where we were, uh, we'll fold this into um, making our caption. And so instead of lynch date, I'll put in date. Um, and so that all looks good. And now if I look at the output here, again, I've got the state, the county, the caption, uh, that includes uh, the nicely formatted date. So I'm in good shape. Again, I can come back up now and assign this to lynchings uh, and get everything else updated. And I'll need to think about my caption data frame. And again, I'm going through here looking for any warning or error messages. Everything looks good. Um, again, uh, this is our lynchings map data. That's good. And I want to select the caption, right? Um, so select caption, distinct, drop NA. I can get rid of this rename line. And I believe, <laughs> let me double check my caption data. I think I only have 10 uh, victims in here. We're in good shape. So we'll go ahead and build the static plot. Uh, so object name not found. So right here, right? In my uh, geom text box. So I want caption which looks good. Um, I'm noticing some funniness with my caption um, being five lines instead of three. Uh, so let's look at what the animation looks like. So my animation, I need to, to cycle over caption rather than name. So that looks good. Um, there was one individual I thought maybe wasn't showing up, but I think they're up here in a small county in Virginia. Um, yeah, right there. So this looks great. I'm really happy with the formatting here. Um, one thing I do notice is that like there's a more lateral real estate to the right here, um, but when we get to like May there, um, it kind of put it down onto two lines. So what we can do in Geome text box is actually make that a bit wider. So I can change the width of that text box up here in Geome text box by doing width equals unit, and then I'll say three inches, uh, and we'll we'll see how that works and we'll go from there. So this looks pretty good. Again, I can't see the individual. Uh, lines, but we don't have five lines and I don't have anything kind of coming over here into Kentucky. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the animation. So that looks pretty good. I noticed that uh, the May uh, line, it goes off to the right. Um, and I, I think this looks pretty good. Um, yeah, there you go. So I'm trying to slowly build things up, right? Why don't we go up and let's do a hundred victims now and see if anything breaks. So we'll slice sample n equals a hundred. And then we will also then update our number of frames to 100. And let's give all this a run. So this looks pretty good. It did take a while to render for 100. I kind of worry about what it's going to be for a few thousand. Um, one thing I'm noticing here about the victims' names is that they're coming in alphabetical order. I'd kind of like them to, to be in that random order. Um, you know, I, normally when we alphabetize names, we're doing it by last name rather than first name. And I don't know, I, I kind of like the thought of having these be somewhat random. We could also do it by date, but eh, let's, let's go ahead. See, now we're going to be an unnamed, or there's going to be all these unnamed victims. Uh, and, and I really do think having them in a random order would be much better. So having all those unnames together at the end convinced me that we do want the names to be randomized. And so I'll come back up here to lynching map data. And what I will do is after my slice sample, I'll do mutate caption to be a factor of caption and then levels caption, right? And so that way the, the factor captions, the order of those factors will be set by the random order that we got out of slice sample. And so we can then pipe that into all this. So I'm gonna change how I render this and I will use AV renderer. And I am going to uh, plop in here uh, the name of the file. So I'm going to create with AV render um, an MP4 file. And so then I can comment out that anim save and go ahead and animate this. And then we'll have an MP4, so a, a video of the animation. So this is great. Uh, I'm really happy with the way this visual turned out. We now have a hundred second video for a hundred of the victims, each victim getting one second. It's really not enough. Um, Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you'd probably want to go and slow it down a little bit. Um, who knows? I, I think this is very effective. 
I, I, I hesitate to say that this is a data visualization. Um, I guess we are showing data, right? Like the counties, but really we're using R to make a movie, which I think is, is pretty cool. And again, I think this is a pretty effective way showing the lynching victims, saying their name, and yeah, I, I hope people receive it well. So to get all of the victims, I'll come back up here where I did my slice sample, and I will do prop equals one, and go ahead and run this and see if we have any problems. Ah, and it's complaining um, that we have a factor that is duplicated, um, which I find a little bit surprising. So I'll go ahead and do a count on um, my caption and to kind of see how many, you know, everybody should be one because I would think they'd be unique, but maybe not. Uh, I'll do top n, n equals one on n. And so we see that unnamed male shot September 7th. We've, we've got seven of those. So using levels as our caption isn't going to work. So I think what we'll do instead is let's go ahead and do a mutate and we will do order equals one to um, n row of the data frame coming through. And we can then do FCT reorder caption. And then we will do that on the order column and see if this works. So that seemed to go well. Uh, and now we can do our caption data, our static, and then we can go ahead and run the rest of our pipeline here. Um, I'm not gonna build out that TIFF because it's not, it's not that interesting. Um, the animation is there. Um, and then end frames needs to be the number of rows that are in caption data, right? And so this will be n row caption data. And we can go ahead and build this out. This is gonna take some time to render, I believe. Um, the video will probably be, so it'll be th like 3,200 seconds long, which I think will be about 50 minutes. Um, it looks like it'll take 25 minutes or so here to render. I'm gonna leave this um, and you'll have to definitely check out that video. I'll post that at the same time as this. Across the top here, I'll put a link uh, to that video and I really encourage you to go check it out. Um, I know this was a longer video than most of the other ones that I've been doing, but hopefully you get, can again see how I'm putting together all these different ideas to uh, kind of fulfill a vision using R to make this movie. Um, ultimately, I hope that you agree that we've done justice to the victims by saying their name, giving as much information about them as we can. So while I'm grateful for you watching this video, I hope you also watch the companion video of uh, the 3200 names um, kind of scrolling across the screen. I hope you let it wash over to you and, and really appreciate the effects of racial violence and this horrible um, plague of lynching in the United States. And of course, we can appreciate that not all of the victims are represented here, that there are no doubt many more black victims of lynching. As I mentioned, there were victims um, of lynching who are white, Hispanic, Native Americans. Um, and, and we need to be aware of this, right? And so uh, I'm sorry for this to be such a downer of an episode or series of episodes, but I think it's important to raise awareness and for us to really think about, you know, how can we use our skills that perhaps we develop for one, one application like microbiology and can apply it to other things to do, to do more good in the world. So again, I hope you watch the video. Um, let, let it all wash over you and, and just be more aware. Uh, please, please, please be sure to share that video um, with as many of your friends and family um, as you can. Um, if they want to watch this video, that'd be awesome too. Um, but certainly that other video is what's really important. Uh, I'd really appreciate any feedback that you might be able to provide me on, on this video um, that we've produced or any of the other visuals that we've been producing as part of this series on Juneteenth. I hope next year when we do something for Juneteenth, Juneteenth that we pick a more positive um, story. Um, and I, I, that should not be hard to do. But anyway, this this was something that um, was on my heart and something that I thought was really important to do. And I hope I hope you agree. And I hope you've gotten something out of this. And um, if not learning R, then kind of learning about American history. So anyway, like I said, please tell your friends about this. Please be sure that you subscribe so you know when we kind of get back to talking about microbiology. And we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.